people do not convert to Judaism because they want to go to heaven or avoid hell. Because, in fact, it's, it's a little trickier to be loyal to Hashem as a Jew than as a Ben Noach. There are more commandments. And if that's your criteria, you're probably better off staying a Ben Noach. People convert to Judaism because they want to join the nation. So let me, let me reframe this for you. Becoming a Ben Noach really is converting to Judaism. Becoming a Ben Noach means a person has adopted Judaism as their faith and believe that the Jewish faith is the, is the ideal perfect path to have a relationship with God. So whether people go through a conversion or become Ben Noach, they all have converted to Judaism. And I think that's largely misunderstood. Uh, it's the only distinction is that people who convert to Judaism are doing something different. And that is they're saying, I not only want to follow the Jewish faith, but I want to join the Jewish people as a nation. I'm changing my identity entirely. I am becoming a Jew, and therefore all of the mitzvot of the Torah are now binding on me. According to our tradition, um, those who convert to Judaism really were always Jews, just didn't know it. They really, and very frequently, um, people who convert to Judaism later discover that they, in fact, always were Jewish. And later discover that, oh, I found out my great-grandmother was Jewish all the time. So, because, in essence, how could you convert to a nation? And you could change what you believe, and you can adopt the faith of the children of Israel. In essence, both converts and B'nai Noach have all, in a conventional sense, converted to Judaism, means have adopted the Jewish faith fully. The difference is that a person who, who goes through a conversion to Judaism is adopting the nation of Israel and becoming a member of the Jewish people in all ways. Both sides are very unique. A Ben Noach is very unique because to be a Ben Noach properly, to join Judaism as a Ben Noach, it's not enough to live a life that's honest and not steal and pay those who work for you on time. You have to actually fulfill those mitzvot because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob commanded you. A person simply says, I'm going to be honest in business because I think it's the right thing to do. You haven't fulfilled the commandment. You have to be honest in business and say because Hashem commanded me to do it. Now, this is why being a Ben Noach is really amazing. Because the mitzvahs on a Ben Noach largely are logical, are rational. And therefore, it's easy for a person to say, I don't steal, not a murder, because I personally think it's wrong, not because any God told me not to. So therefore, a person is very free on that area, whereas, in contrast, a person who is a Jew, whether they were born that way or converted to Judaism, and keeps Shabbos, puts on tefillin. There's no way to explain making Kiddush on Shabbat except because God commanded you. It means we're stuck, in a sense. People who are Jewish as a nation, it's clear that we're keeping Shabbos because God commanded it. The Ben Noach is simply is saying that the reason why I won't steal is because I'm creating the image of God, which every person is. And because I'm creating the image of God, I therefore don't want, I don't steal because I'm a reflection of God's creation here on earth. So therefore a... A Ben Noach has a unique opportunity to serve God because he's, he or she is never forced into that conclusion. They can say, I, I just don't steal because I don't think it's a good thing. Okay, A convert to Judaism, someone who joins the nation, is very beloved as well. In fact, there are 25 of the 613 commandments, 25 of them are specifically to be kind to the convert 
or it's corollary not to be unkind to the convert. It's repeated all over the Torah. To be kind to the convert, remember you were yourself a stranger in Egypt, and Hashem looks at those who convert in a very special way as well. Our sages tell us of a, a king who had shepherds with sheep, and the king was looking at his sheep, and he noticed among the sheep there was a deer. And the king asked the shepherd, why is a deer doing among my sheep? So the shepherd said, Your Highness, I, I'm sorry. We keep trying to get rid of the deer, but it keeps coming back to the fold of the sheep. But I assure you, Highness, that we will get rid of this deer and send it away. So the king said, don't send away the deer. In fact, feed it very well and protect it and make sure no harm comes to it. And the shepherds were very curious. Why do we want to protect the deer more than the sheep? And the king turned to the shepherd and said, I'll explain to you why. The sheep need me. A sheep has no protection. It can't run. It can't go anywhere. It has no defenses. A sheep without a shepherd is lost, is dead. It has no chance. Any predator could take a sheep and go away with it. A sheep cannot survive on its own. But the deer, it can. The deer can run as fast as the wind. A deer can live out in the forest on its own. It can, it can sense the presence of a danger of a predator and run faster than the predators. The deer doesn't need to be among my sheep. It could be amongst the forest and amongst other deer in the wilderness. But that deer chose to be with me, protect her. So are the converts to the Jewish faith. They didn't need all this trouble. They didn't need this problem. The Jews are a small nation. We're a very tiny people. And we're among nations that don't like us very much. And without the hand of God, without the protection of heaven, we would have no chance at all. The nations would eat us up, would destroy us in a moment. The only reason why we're here is because Hashem is our shepherd. Hashem guards over us. Along comes people who presumably are not Jewish. They can do very well hiding in the non-Jewish world and no one will bother them, no one will molest them. But these individuals who could live in the forest, who could survive on their own, they don't need anyone to protect them. They say, I want to be counted among the sheep of Israel. This is very, very unique. So people who convert to Judaism simply want to be counted among the children of Israel as a nation. But B'nai Noach, or those who convert to Judaism, are all adopting the faith of Israel, the Jewish faith. The Jews have a special role, and that's to be an Orla Goyim, a covenant nation and a light to the nations. Isaiah 42, verse 6. Isaiah 49, verse 6. And that's our role. And such a job to be a light to the nations, to be a covenant nation, this requires special fuel. You can't eat anything you want to. Shabbos? You have to keep Shabbos. You have to be, this is a very unique engine. It requires very special care. It's very susceptible. So, but B'nai Noach are in a conventional sense, have embraced Judaism fully as their faith. And in, a in an interesting twist, there is a greater challenge and therefore a greater reward for the Ben Noach, because the Ben Noach could look at these Noachide laws and say, ah, all logical, I don't need God for that. 
Now, if they think about it for a moment, they realize that, of course, no other animal understands what don't steal is and don't murder is. It doesn't even make sense. They wouldn't know what you're talking about. The reason why Noahide laws make sense to us on a primal level is because we're creating the image of God. Do you see what I'm saying? That means at Mount Sinai, when the children of Israel were told, don't murder, people didn't go, really? I would have never thought of that one. Don't steal. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Okay, I guess God doesn't... No, they knew already it's not a good idea. Now, why do we know don't murder and don't steal? Because we're created in the Selim of the Kim, we're creating the image of Hashem. If you could talk to a cat, if you can have a conversation, and you say, don't kill, the cat will go, why? You say a dog, don't sleep with another dog's wife. They'll go, why not? What's, <laughs> what's the bother? What difference? Whoever's the strongest dog gets to mate with the female. Doesn't, what are you, stupid? Don't take another dog's food. That's what dogs do. Dogs bury their bones to hopes that no other dog finds it. And if another dog finds it, that's it. And if a dog is eating, I was in Papua, and they have dogs running wild. Just among people, but there are dogs just all over the place. And I forget, so if there was garbage, one dog had food in his mouth, and along came a bigger dog, and he just took it and walked off, and the little dog didn't say anything. And in order to feed the little weak dog, you had to wait till the other dog was away and then feed it, or else it'll take it away. What happened? Don't steal. The answer is that dogs are not created in the image of God. They have no... It's not that dogs are rebelling against God. <laughs> they just have no clue what you're talking about. Because we are literally... It's just like the electronics that here is made for this voltage. We are created for God's voltage. It works. That's why we feel an imperative not to steal. Our entire consciousness about what is right and wrong is from Hashem. What we know to be right and wrong is derived only from HaKadosh Baruch only from the Holy One. And the Ben Noach just recognizes that and says, look, of course I feel you shouldn't steal and I, I wouldn't want to steal, but I attribute my desire to be honest to God, not to some instinct of my own. This is a very, very challenging thing to do because it cannot be done by the Jew who's eating kosher and keeping Shabbos. What explanation could be given for that? There is none.